coming at you today with another live stream. If you're watching this on catch up on the YouTube video on demand, then welcome. We are doing more and more of these live streams at the moment, and it's a really fun hangout on a Thursday afternoon. So if you are watching on demand, set a reminder for next Thursday where we can hang out and talk about gold and silver and everything that's going on at the moment. Uh, it really is a very interesting time right now with everything that's happening in the world of silver. Almost week by week we seem to get new things that are just earth shattering almost. And this week of course it's all about the price of silver and how it's come crashing and tumbling down. It really has been quite the uh, tumultuous uh, couple of days and this culmination in this Thursday of massive drops down in the metal prices. So we are going to talk about that and much more as we go through. I've got a big pile of shiny stuff out here on the table just done filming with a really interesting concept of a video for tomorrow, for tomorrow's episode of In Focus Friday. Uh, we've got all of this stuff which is just massive, massive pile of really interesting things. So um, we've got a few people coming into the chat now. I have no doubt there'll be more people coming as we go throughout the stream. And if you do want to say hello, then please feel free to do so and ask any questions that you would like to know my answer or opinions on. Uh, if you use the at symbol, it highlights my name in the chat and I'll be able to see uh, your question a lot more easy. But for right now, we've just got a few people in there asking. So Platinum Beast is in the chat and he mentions that Platinum is down too. Presumably because your name is the Platinum Beast, you are a big fan of Platinum. To be fair, I am also a fan of Platinum. I think Platinum is a very undervalued metal right now. And the price going down even further certainly does make life interesting in terms of decision making for that metal. However, because its price is going down as well as gold, and to some extent one would argue gold is falling a significantly larger proportion more, although actually I've just, having said that, I've gone and checked on the live prices and now <laughs> platinum's at 787. I swear that only about half an hour ago it was over 800 still. Um, so yeah, okay, maybe, maybe not, but platinum certainly still is a good buy in the long, long term, but it's also a risky one, that is for sure. Um, so back to the chat, we've got Mr. Ass, uh, Mr. Mr. Ass, Mr. Ass Assassin 86, or Assassin, spelled differently, just to confuse me. He says, are you going to buy on this dip or wait it out before backing up the truck? Well, backing up the truck, that's a phrase which I loathe and detest. And in fact, that'll be a subject for the video that I have coming out on Sunday. Um, the answer to your question is I will certainly be reconsidering silver as an item to look to purchase, but I still can't see how it's necessarily right for me at the moment in terms of the premiums and the additional price over spot price relative to its yellow cousin gold. I just don't necessarily see buying in bulk. What I can see doing is buying lots of individual curiosities, and it's something I actually mentioned when filming a video with this giant pile of different things here. If there's anything that catches your eye, by the way, as we go throughout the video, please feel free to just ask. Let me know if you want to, me to pick anything up in particular, or if I pick something up and show it briefly, then let me know if you want to see it in more detail or learn anything about it. Uh, so in answer to your question, Mr. Assassin, I might be buying more, um, but certainly not in bulk for silver. If I'm going to buy anything, it will be more gold. LSD Lee's Silver Design says, Morning BYB, today is your birthday. Well, happy birthday to you, LSD, from Halifax, Canada. Well, have a happy, happy birthday to you. Chris Howe in the chat. Hello again, Mr. BYB. Yes, sorry about the first uh, go there. I don't know why. Sometimes when I stream, because at the moment I, I really don't have any kind of technology, I literally stream off my phone, balanced on the top of one of my old furnaces. Um, I just don't understand why sometimes when I get it all started and ready to go, that the frame rate is always really bad. But as you can see, it's all crisp and clear and wonderful right now. So, yeah, sorry about that. That's just the way it goes sometimes. Moondog in the chat. Hello. Uh, Richie Rich says, never so happy that I could add more gold. Yes, I know. It is indeed a good time to be accumulating more stuff for sure. Uh, Platinum Beast uh, says, back of bullion, do you think platinum is down for the same reasons as gold and silver? Yes, I do. I think precious metals all around the world um, are basically going down just simply because of 
everything that's happening with regards to um, I'm just going to remove and hide a user for being a bit of a well negative Nancy basically um, so what I was saying was I do think platinum has come down because of the different um, issues in the world and the greater economic forum at the moment I think platinum and gold and silver all have that connection together whether people think that its majority of it is a precious metal um, in terms of gold really as the primary silver as the secondary and then the rest are industrial metals yeah definitely possibly but I still think it falls into suit with the rest of them uh, Chris House says he bought at the wrong time uh, just by a few days ago. Well, my friend, I think that's just part and parcel of buying precious metals. Sometimes we hit the nail on the head and we get something and it's an incredible deal. The next day, silver prices go down and we think, ah, it wasn't as good a deal as we could have got. But, you know, it really is swings and roundabouts. I've had plenty of times where I've bought and then the prices have gone up and up and up massively after I've bought. And likewise, things have gone down. I have to say, fortunately, this time I have not gone and bought a vast amount of metal just before the massive price drops, which is nice. That means that for me, there is this very much lure to go and buy something new, something big, something shiny, and probably something made of gold. That's my way of thinking. This is my current table piece of gold that I have out and about right now. Lovely five sovereign Isle of Man, beautiful piece. Uh, but yeah, more, more gold probably to come. Now, I've missed a bunch of people in the chat. We've got more and more people coming in. Um, so please, if you want to ask a question, also, if you want to see anything in particular in here, then please do highlight your comment by using the at symbol. So if you go at Backyard Bullion, I will see it a lot easier in the chat, and I'll try and give priority to some of those uh, people who are asking about different types of coins. Uh, Hatsy Kitty has asked, in fact, for two, and she's highlighted. She's asking for the clock coin, which I think was this one. And then she's asking, the other one was the, um, oh, I think it's just this one. She just wanted to see the clock coin. I saw you asking about the lobster and I thought you wanted that one as well. So this is a zero hour mint, 99 one ounce Troy fine silver round. And I got this from a giveaway win back in 2000 and I think late 2016, very early on in my days here on YouTube. I was very lucky to win this giveaway and I cannot for love nor money remember who I won this giveaway from. I'm so sorry if that person ever sees this video. I do still have it. I do still cherish it. I still enjoy it. It's something that's really very cool and different. Uh, it's not something that you'll see every day out there and I really do enjoy it. I think, I think from memory up in my safe, I have got a little scrap of paper with the letter that came with it. I keep all of these things in a little curiosity box, um, just opening the capsule so that we can have a real close look at it. All of these things, by the way, um, you know, that I win in giveaways and stuff like that, these will be like stuff I treasure, stuff that I will never part with. Uh, they're part of my like identity almost, my history and my memory box for when I'm almost, you know, in the back end of my life and I just want to sit back and remember the good times. Uh, this will be part of that and uh, I really like it. So, um, yeah, that's what it is. I hope you enjoy that uh, Hatsi. Uh, it's certainly unique and something you don't see about every single day at all. So guys, as I said, if you want to see something in particular in the background of this wonderful array of silver that we've got out on the table, then let me know uh, by highlighting down in the comment section and I'll try and get to as many as I can. Also, if you've got questions that you want to ask, then use the uh, at symbol uh, as well because then it'll highlight and I can see things better. So there's a lot of, a lot of people in the chat uh, and I do miss quite a lot. And, and you guys, if you've watched any of my live streams before, you know that essentially I'm just sitting here in my kitchen rambling and I do go off on tangents. That's what I do best. Um, e1 uh, Guwop says, can you show the German, uh, the German dragon silver? Um, so I presume the German dragon silver you're talking about is the Fafnir uh, coin or double coin set that we've got here that creates this incredible thing from the Germania mint. So what a wonderful piece this is. Love it. Absolutely love it really unique. You don't see anything like this really being made at the moment and uh, it certainly does hit that kind of collector's market button. Uh, I'll tell you what. what's even better than this though is the um, the coloured high relief antiqued uh, rutherium plated version that I've also got that the Germanian Mint really were very generous to uh, donate to the cause, the Backyard Bullion cause. Uh, so I hope you like that one, E1 Gurup. 
Uh, next in the list, I'm trying to work my way through it as fast as possible, guys. We're still quite a way back. Glenn M says, can you show the bar on the bottom right corner? Yep, the star. <laughs> ah, no, we've spilt water everywhere. Um, the bar is one of the problems of streaming live. Things go wrong. Anyway, I'm just going to mop some of this up while I talk a little bit about uh, this coin. I've also actually got some... Oh, no, this is a disaster. I've got some books underneath my streaming platform here so i'm just gonna have to do a little bit of quick maintenance oh dear that's not gone well has it fortunately i have a towel to hand the dog wet feet towel um right well that's an eventuality which you don't see very often that will go in the fails highlight reel for backyard bully in 2021 for sure oh dear fortunately it's just water and it's nothing that's going to create horrible sticky messes and things like that. And also, it didn't go in the middle of the stream as well, so that's something, I suppose. Hey-ho, we all live and learn, so I'll have to do a little bit of drying up as we go. Yes, uh, Silver, uh, Silver Saurus says, save the shiny! Uh, right, I'm very sorry about that. How many people are laughing at me in the stream for spilling everything? I spilled, Christmas Sanchez says, I spilled the afternoon tea. Fortunately, my friend, it was just water. Uh, and actually, the only real damage that potentially has been done was to a book that I was balancing my, uh, my um, furnace on, my impromptu tripod. And fortunately, they're kind of like um, hardbacks with the you know, decent covers on, so they're not actually damaged too much. That's fine. Good. All right. Let's get back to business. I think Glenn was asking whew, ah, the joys of live streaming Glenn was asking about this little bar here the star metals bar that's also got a little bit of water on it now but hey hey anyway that's uh, how it goes uh, yeah this star metals bar is a wonderful piece I bought this off eBay I bought this off eBay like 2017 I think and it was at the time when eBay had all of these wonderful like um, vouchers that you could get every now and again uh, Chris Howe not laughing at all um, St. Key says, maybe get a tripod. Yeah, I know, I really should, but I'm a lazy, lazy person when it comes to technology. And um, why get a tripod when you've got a wonderful furnace that you can balance your phone on? I mean, honestly, that's uh, money saved right there. Anyway, I bought this off eBay. Uh, I bought it, I think, at the time for about hundred and £150, which at the time... Uh, no, was it £150? I can't. I remember it being very low spot price. So for I know there was another one. It was a Perth Mint ten ounce bar I bought for one hundred fifty pounds off eBay. This one I got for something like eighty five to one hundred pounds. I'll have to look at my records. Really good price for what I thought at the time was a really nice old piece of silver. Uh, definitely old school. Something that's different and a curiosity. So, uh, but you're part of this right part of this pile here that I'm talking about. The issue with this is I don't know for love nor money what most of this stuff actually cost. Um, it's my pile of In Focus Friday coins that has been sat here with, uh, you know, accumulation of nearly five years worth of featuring coins on YouTube. And it's just something that I don't really know what to do with. And I haven't been keeping track of the price paid for a lot of these things. Yeah, I could probably go back and find some of them easier than others. But the vast majority, I just don't have a clue. And that's a good problem to have, I will just add. Um, but, you know, it is part of... Uh, the curiosities of this stuff. Now, whew, I'm just settling down after spilling nearly a whole pint of water over my table and my shiny, shiny silver pile. Um, so we're going to try and get back to the chat. And if there are um, any people out there who want to see anything in particular covered in water or not, then let me know in the chat if there's something that strikes your fancy, something that you're seeing here that is different, new, something you've not seen before, or just something you want to have a closer look at. Use the uh, at symbol in the chat and we can have a little uh, look in the chat about it and it's a lot easier for me to see. I see Archaeology Mike saying, be careful with eBay counterfeits. Yeah, I completely agree. Uh, eBay is rife full of counterfeit coins. I have had a few counterfeit coins coming off eBay in the past to me. Fortunately, eBay has always stepped in as and when I've needed to. The vast majority of times people know when they're selling fake silver and when you go back and say, wait, this is fake. Actually, they just tend to refund you because it's just easier for them. Uh, you know, if they get 
10 coins sold and only one of them is returned as a fake, then they're still quids in. So for them, it doesn't make a difference. But um, yeah, no, I agree that silver on eBay is a dodgy thing and you should be very careful with it. Um, but there are easy ways to test things like this Stars Metal bar. And it's, no, it's an interesting one for me for this is that it's such an old bar. I wouldn't melt it down and use it uh, in my poured silver and um, send it up for assay because whilst this is as close as 999 silver as I can verify at home, there's a good chance that it might just be slightly below 999 if it's got, uh, you know, some older, you know, materials or older manufacturing processes in it. So I personally wouldn't melt this down and assay it, but um, it's as close as can be and it is, you know, as genuine as it can be, but there might just be this minus, minute little piece of non-silver material in it. Um, so, yeah. Um, we are going to jump back to the gold and silver price right now. So one of the reasons why I was really keen, oh my goodness, it's dropped even further. One of the reasons why I was hoping to do a good live stream today is because we are in this really interesting 24 hour period right now where things are dropping like a stone. Gold is now down to £1,277 an ounce. That's $1,781 an ounce. That's nearly a $120 drop in close to um, gosh, close to a week. That's an awful lot. That is a big old drop. Silver currently at £18.74 an ounce, $26.12 an ounce. That is a big drop down as well. Um, it's going to be forming part of my rhetoric, I suppose, over this next coming uh, couple of videos about everything that's going on in this crazy world we live in. And there's, of course, been this huge period of hype and uh, panic buying almost and you know I'm, I, I know for a fact that there are going to be a lot of people out there who are going to be feeling really really bad about the silver that they've bought at the high prices that they've bought and it's going to be really hard for people to sit there and just think ah do you know what did I make a wrong decision but then you see all the same people who feel that way you see all of the rhetoric on all of the other platforms out there that are going Now's the time to back up the truck and to buy more, double down on your mistake almost. And I think that that is one of the absolute worst things that people could do if they're hard up for some of the silver that they've bought. Of course, for those who are regular viewers of my channel, you'll know that the responsible stacking mantra is almost like my cornerstone. And, uh, you know, right now there are going to be a lot of people who are feeling bad and vulnerable and then they're going to start seeing the same messages over and over again and they're going to be going back into metals even further and that's dangerous. I've seen it done before and I've seen people lose out massively before. So let me know your thoughts down in the comment in the live chat about gold and silver prices. I feel like every time I check them at the moment they've dropped down even further. I, Oh they have as well, look it's 1276 now. Another pound an ounce off sil of gold gone. Um, goodness me. Uh, I remember this afternoon I went for a swim, uh, was out for an hour, came back and had a message on my phone for a very good friend of mine who said, uh, goodness me, gold has gone down to 1275, 1280, I think it was 1280, he said 1275. Uh, and I was like, what? It was like 1295 when I went for a swim and it's massive drops, massive drops in a short period of time. Uh, and of course, right now the US markets are starting to open up. So of course the drops are following on as the uh, US Wall Street people start getting in on the action and moving their money out of precious metals into other things. And that's part of the problem. You know, the, this stuff here is a wonderful thing. And we're all conditioned almost on sort of silver tube land to love it and to think it is the best thing since sliced bread. But ultimately, this stuff is non yielding junk. It just sits there, it doesn't do anything. Yes, you can make money on the rises and spot prices, but you can also lose when you don't have your money in something else which performs better and that's what a lot of people right now are looking at and I know for one for myself you know you look at the news and you see these figures about the potential growth of economies over this coming weeks or you know next coming months next coming quarters and it really is quite interesting to see that things actually are looking pretty good for recovery of course we're recovering from a pretty low point right now so it's all relative now dumb Larry uh, dumb Barry beg your pardon don't be calling yourself Dumb Barry, but anyway, Dumb Barry in the chat has asked a question with the at symbol, so I've spotted it. He says, just curious, how much silver and gold uh, do you usually get per month? Well, it's all relative, Barry, in terms of budgets, in terms of overall strategies, whether you're front-loading an investment to go 
you know, for the future or whether you're just doing slow and steady wins the race type affair. Um, I think it's all relative to some people. I've always thought that if I, between myself and Mrs. Backyard Bullion's income and savings, if we can look to save, um, you know, a couple of ounces of gold every couple of months, whether we save up and buy a few in one month or if we go and buy a whole ounce in every single month or something like that, then that would be a really great goal. That's not to say that we do that every single month because, of course, there are things that get in the way of that in terms of life, bills, you know, other things that you want, might want to invest in or buy. Um, so for sure, you know, it's all relative, but uh, for some people it can be that much. Some people it can be a silver ounce every month. Depends on your budget entirely. Um, so, yeah, it's all relative. Um, just going to have another quick look in the chat. My goodness, we have 130 people watching and only 34 thumbs ups. So here's a little reminder to everybody to hit that thumbs up button and let's see if we can get the thumbs ups going closer to 100 by the end of the stream. If you guys want to ask a question or if you want to see anything in particular out here on the table, this is an eclectic mix. We've even got coins underneath coins here. Um, if you want to see anything in particular, then let me know in the chat. Use the at symbol that highlights my name so I can see it very quickly and it's a lot easier. Um, so yes, let me know down in the chat if there's any particular item that you want to see or if you've got any questions or comments or anything you want to ask me as well feel free to do so. Mark Wise asks, heading to the Perth Mint on Saturday, worth getting proof coins or is it best to stick with bullion? Well, Mark, it's very much an interesting topic and one that I could probably do an entire video on. Personally, I think that proof coins are a very risky buy and they are something that you will have to put a lot of work into to get money out at the other end. There are a few per uh, I was going to say Perth Mint. I'm sure there are a few Perth Mint proof points that go on to do exceptionally well and will have huge growth. But most proof coins, 9 out of 10 proof coins, in my experience, don't do very well. And they'll sit there as lovely things to look at, but ultimately not as particularly great earners in terms of profit. Bullion has a lot of potential growth right now, and I do think Bullion has got the pip over silver proof coins but only at the right premiums, that's the problem. So if you're going directly to the Perth Mint without postage, maybe you can get hold of some cheap bullion. That would be my thoughts. But if there's a particular proof coin you like, then go for it, that's what I say. Um, Joseph Jones says an interesting thing. He says, uh, if each of your subs were a Troy ounce... By the way, Joseph, you've been uh, a really good supporter of the channel for a long time. I'm going to make you a moderator, good friend. Joseph Jones says, if each of your subs were a Troy ounce, you'd have more than a ton. 34,000 plus subscribers now. I think we're at 34,300, something like that, just under 300. Uh, yeah, really, it's, it's mad that I, I still look back at some of my old videos and I see the 100 subscriber video that I did. Um, you know, it makes me quite happy to think that there are 100 people out there that wanted to watch some of my videos, let alone 34,000. And that's a big number, guys. Like 34,000 is a big number, and I'm really, really impressed with all of you for sticking with me for this long. Uh, if you, By the way, if you've been subscribed to the channel, let me know in the chat, live chat, how long you've been subscribed for. Um, it'd be really interesting to see if we've got any real long-term subscribers in here. Joseph, how long have you been subscribed, my friend? It's been a while. I'm pretty sure you've been commenting first on a lot of my videos for a good couple of years now, but let me know when you subscribe down in the live chat. Uh, Crystal Miku says, do you have the Britannia, the Britannia Germania coin? I think I do. Uh, if I do, it will be in this pile because this is where all of my... Oh, there it is. My goodness me. Found it almost straight away. It's covered in water because for those of you who are just joining the stream later, if you want to write giggle, uh, then go back in the stream a little bit and see the point where I knocked an entire pint of water over, uh, just very narrowly catching most of the coins on this table. That was good fun. <laughs> anyway, here's the Germania and Britannia. By the way, everyone else, if you want to see a particular coin or item out here on the table, then let me know uh, down in the live chat. You can put the at symbol and it highlights my name in the live chat so I can see quickly and easily. And if there's something you want to have a good close look at, then let me know. Uh, it's really good to, to get all these coins out. I've just done filming a really nice video uh, for tomorrow where we talk about this pile of coins and how it almost represents a little bit of a first world problem for me because the vast majority of what I've got here I bought specifically to showcase on YouTube and there's a very large eclectic mix of different items here uh, some of which are considerably covered in water right now but um, you know they represent an interesting collection 
uh, that is very achievable for a lot of people. You know, a lot of this has just been accumulated a couple of coins at a time over five years. And over five years, I've done close to 250 episodes of the In Focus Friday series. And that's a lot of different individual items to pick up. So interesting times for sure. Um, so we're going to have a quick look now. There's quite a few people who are saying how long they've been subscribed to my channel, which is really nice. Uh, Voice of Reason's been on for three months. Uh, Hatsi Caddy is on for a year or two now. Hatsi can't even remember because they all merge into one, and I get that. I understand. Uh, 381, 322, a couple of weeks. Welcome. There's a lot of new subscribers that have come in, I have to say, over this last couple of weeks and months. We've had a, br a you know, brand new dearth of people coming in from a few of our videos that have uh, done very well recently. So it is nice to bring new people in. Kibbs London says he's been subscribed for about an hour. Wonderful. It's nice to have people even up to now joining the channel. Uh, 432 cycles per second says two months that he's been. And Joseph Jones, one of our brand new moderators, has been on for over a year now. Didn't know there was a stacking community on YouTube, only knew of collectors. And I'm in the top five stacking channels. Fantastic. Great to see I'm in your top five. Uh, Goma44 says, St. Helena's one ounce gold is beautiful. Do I have one? No, I'm afraid I do not have any of the St. Helena's gold. I do have some St. Helena's silver, probably in this pile, if you can spot one and let me know where it is. But for right now, I'm afraid I could not tell you where uh, I have got those. Um, Dutch Silver Pirate says he's been following for two years now. Cash and Coins, hello, Backyard Bullion. From 2018, he's been subscribed. That seems to be one of the oldest ones now. Although, right underneath that, we've got Teban Jose, who's been since 2017. But he's been in the silver game since 2010, with a lot of silver YouTubers that went away after 2011 with the whole silver ca uh, crash, JP Morgan. Yeah, I wonder whether or not this whole wave, because I was in this sort of second wave of silver tubers, if you want to call us that. Um, you know, I was inspired by a lot of the other people out there that make videos uh, about silver to just pick up the camera and start pouring silver and to start talking about silver. And I was in this sort of second wave of new channels that came out. And now there are just dozens and dozens and dozens of new ones. And it's so difficult to keep up with like the subscribe list for me. I try and subscribe to as many as I can that I see out there that I enjoy that's new, but it's almost impossible to keep up with everybody. And certainly if you're trying to watch all of these videos as well, it's almost impossible. I'm fortunate that I have the ability to just have uh, like the radio, the YouTube on in the background when I'm pouring silver, for example. So a lot of what I get on my YouTube feed is just, um, you know, my favorite YouTubers that I'll either create playlists for uh, or watch laters for, or, uh, you know, YouTube will start recommending new channels and things like that, which is great. So um, there are definitely cool new channels out there that I still discover to this day, um, but it is difficult to keep up with everybody and to watch everybody's videos. So I do appreciate all of you out there that do watch on a regular basis. That is something that is very difficult. We are up to 146 people in the chat. That is an awful lot. Uh, I don't think I've seen that many in the, uh, in the chat for a while. I think our previous best was about 125 in one of our previous live streams. Uh, I have a suspicion that it's because the gold and silver prices are being a little bit mad at the moment. I'm just refreshing the page right now. And we're at 12.76. So it hasn't come down any further in the last five or six minutes since I last checked. Uh, but it's certainly been a tumultuous day on the precious metal markets. The biggest loser of the day or certainly the last 24 hours, does seem to be gold. Um, it's changed. The weak change for gold, in fact, we can do this if we look at the different charts. The weak change for gold, 4.48%. The weak change for silver, no, I'm wrong. The silver price has gone down even further, 5.3% for silver. And platinum, 4%. So platinum is the better hold right now of all of these three precious metals. But certainly, uh, you know, the gold price going down is an interesting one, but silver going down further. I didn't I suppose the ratios and the price points is different because of uh, the lower numbers. It just didn't seem as much, but silver falling off a cliff today. Um, I wonder what everybody over on the Reddit pages of Wall Street, silver and the likes are talking about. I mean, it's going to form, guys, it's going to form a big part of my rhetoric for next week's content. And in fact, 
one of the videos I want to make in this next coming week is a silver pouring compilation because I got back to the silver pouring bench this week and I've been pouring loads of silver, really enjoying getting back there and pouring. And I've been videoing nearly all of the silver that I've been pouring and I wanted to do a pouring compilation. But with everything that's happening right now, I know for a fact there are going to be an awful lot of people out there who are going to be struggling with the silver price drops that people are seeing right now. And that is really going to be hard for them and then combine that with the follow-on that there are going to be an awful lot of people who will just say do you know what now is the time to stack more now is the time to back up the truck because silver is on sale and it's time to buy everything oh i am very very worried for people who fall into this hype once again and it's this hype that goes both ways and it's really distressing because you see hype when silver goes up people go you buy now or you'll miss out and then hype when silver goes down because people say time to back up the truck and there are a lot of vulnerable people out there who are fed up and want to start really earning and it's just going to be dangerous it's going to be hard it's going to be putting people at risk let me know you guys what you think down below about that because it's going to be difficult to see what's happening in this next couple of days and weeks and there's going to be so many different i mean i i'd be very curious to know what all of these channels out there that are talking about uh, silver hitting 300 dollars an ounce basil three and gold hitting like seven thousand dollars an ounce or something ridiculous like that you know i wonder what everybody's talking about like that right now it's just gonna be ridiculous it's gonna be hard it's gonna be uh anyway i've been neglecting the chat and i do apologize to all of you roy lagden is in in the chat as well a big welcome to you my friend one of my long-term supporters and of course channel members and i think i saw another channel member granddad lion in the chat who says he's finally caught one of the live streams a big welcome to you granddad lion and a big thank you to your support here on the channel um, roy lagden makes a very good point at the top of the chat uh, which is that um, it will take years for economies around the world to recover that is for sure but the recovery is going to be really important for people and economies to make money and that's what people want they don't want this stuff here sitting there not earning anything just sitting there being a almost like a you know, it's a, it's a negative earning asset. It does not earn you dividends. It does not earn you more. You know, by having this stuff, you are potentially not having your money in something else which will earn you more. That's one of the arguments here, and that's why some of the silver and gold prices have gone down quite so much, because people are moving things into other assets. Now, I'm going to go to the chat and try and focus primarily only on people who are using the at symbol uh, and my name to ask questions, because, um, I'm sorry, the chat is coming fast fast and thick at the moment we've got 175 people in the chat and it's really difficult to keep up dutch silver pirate asks do you have the marvel series and is it worth buying these coins dutch silver pirate i have a couple of them i think one of them's out here on the table somewhere so if you remember i have a captain america somewhere for a lot more money i can't remember where are they worth buying they certainly are holding premiums well some of the earlier editions are doing exceptionally well in premium growth as well um, if i can't find it in the short there it is captain america um, if it's something you like by the way the water that everybody's seeing if you are joining now i managed to spill a whole pint of water out on the table here earlier so you can see that i haven't been able to clear it all up um, so some of these are a little bit wet if you are uh, thinking of getting hold of some of these coins, then don't pay massively over the odds for them. Um, it, they are nice coins. They are good coins to collect for sure. They are doing well in premiums, but that's no guarantee of growth in the future. Um, so do bear that in mind. But yeah, I do like them. I think they're cool. I haven't been collecting them religiously as a series though. Next highlighted comment is Mark Y saying palladium down 6.5% today. Mark, I tend to not even just look at palladium and rhodium or whatever it is. Um, they're just metals that I will never invest in and will never uh, really consider as viable investments for me. Other people will do it, that's fine. But for me, they're just not, not really something I want to get involved with. But yeah, 6.5% off that, that's one of the things. You know, They are super volatile. Anthony2146 USMC, I presume that's your serial number in the US Marine Corps, welcome my friend, uh, says, which bullion coin do you predict will hold the highest premiums? Which is the most recognized around the world? Uh, well, I don't have one out here on the table. Uh, in fact, I've got the only one Queen's Beast that I seem to remember I have in this pile of silver. It will be one of the Queen's Beast series coins for sure. Either that or it will be the Queen's Beast Completer coin, the one with all 10 beasts on it. Those are bullion grade coins and I think that those will hold huge premiums over time. By the way, that is a big crack in the capsule, not on the coin. 
Uh, but yeah, I do think that those are super, super good coins to buy. Of course, there are hundreds of different types of coins all around the world. Uh, you know, all of the ones you see on the table here are bullion coins. Some of these could easily outperform those. But for me, I think the Queen's Beast is always a good bet. Um, CR says, back Kiar bullion, the sale hasn't really begun yet. Well, I do think silver and gold have got further to go down, unfortunately. We're sort of holding a little bit steady over this last sort of 15, 20 minutes of this live stream at 12.77 for gold. This is in pounds, by the way, 17.81 in dollars, 12 uh, sorry, 1873 in pounds, 2613 for silver, and 781 for platinum. Big old drops in platinum, which is a bit sad. Um, I do think, though, we are going to see lower prices there. You're right, CR. Uh, so, heading back down in the chat. Uh, goodness me, we have a lot of people in the chat today. Uh, just as a quick reminder before I jump in and answer a few more questions, to hit that thumbs up button. 178 people watching. Let's see if we can get over two by the end of the stream. Maybe we will. If we can get to 150 likes, though, that would be incredible. So 86 now. Let's see if we can get that little milestone of 100, and then we'll go back to the chat. Casper Torp says, Silver Brits versus Silver Cougarans versus Silver Maples. Thoughts for main stacking? Uh, kind of depends, Casper, where you're based. If you are in the United Kingdom, I would say getting things like Britannia's, there's bloody water everywhere on these coins, if you're in the United Kingdom, getting uh, capital gains tax exempt coins like Britannia's is a really good thing to do. Not familiar with capital gains exemption status on maples. I did see a maple leaf in this pile of silver earlier. Uh, did it, I think it was over this corner. Anyway, the point is it might be better for a Canadian to buy maple leaves for tax reasons. It might be better for a South African to buy Krugerrands for some reasons or an American to buy eagles. There is no easy answer to that question. I can't seem to find the maple. Uh, I definitely have one though. If you spot it, let me know where it is or if there's any other coin that you guys want to see, then let me know out on the table. Reminder to you all to hit the at symbol if asking a question because I am getting a lot of people asking things in the chat. It's very difficult to see. Um, Archaeology Mike says, Backyard Bullion, are capsules waterproof? Um, well, I hope so, um, because I spilled a bloody pint of water over my coins. Well, here's, here's one that was over on that side of the table that got a lot of, uh, I think they say silver poured on it, water poured on it. So let's crack it open and find out if the coin is uh, still dry or not. And as predicted, it's very difficult to open capsules live on a YouTube stream. So I'm getting my little knife out. For those who, who don't know, get a knife and just slide it in and up and then you are ugh, golden. So there is the coin. There it is out of the capsule. And I have to say, it's bone dry. And that little spot that's up there on the top left actually just came off my thumb. I knew that I saw it go on there straight away. So other than that little spot that I just put on there, it is dry. Uh, for those who are worried about me handling coins like this with my bare hands, these really are not coins that I'm worried about in terms of premium growth and keeping in pristine condition. I won't get every single one out and play with them and smear them and get spots all over them, but ultimately all of these coins I bought for YouTube to showcase on In Focus Friday and the others, so uh, we'll see how they go. Uh, Dutch Silver Pirate asks another question. He says, do you prefer coins or bars? Um, I like both. No, that's a cop-out answer. I think I like coins. Coins are super special. They've got this lure to them, this history to them, this ability to be diverse and different in the same size. And that's something that I love. Uh, you know, you can get this kind of incredible finish here on this, like this Rwanda nautical Mayflower, or you can get something a lot more simple. Um, you know, there are just so many different things you can do with a coin. Bars, it's kind of just, it's a bar, and that's, you know, pretty much all that you get with a bar. Um, there are lots of, uh, you know, different th different finishes on bars for sure, but ultimately a bar is a bar. I think there's always a place in any stack for a big old bar of silver, but for me, I do like a lot of coins. Um, Leo Townsend, welcome in the chat, my friend. I hope you're well. He asks, any any comment on the Beskar bars? Are they holding premiums, one ounce or larger? To be perfectly honest, Leo, I have not the foggiest idea because I have not bought any. I have not looked at the prices. I've not kept an eye out on what their prices are doing and where their premiums are at. So I don't know is the honest answer. If anyone else has got any of the Beskars, then let me know. I do think that they are wonderful. Part of the reason I don't have any of them is because uh, they were very expensive and the premium on them, I just didn't like them really. So... 
Um, Archaeology Mike's saying that they're more waterproof than PCGS and NGC slabs. I'd have thought that they would be more waterproof than these capsules, my friend, but I don't know, each to their own. Um, now, going through the chat, we have Jacob de Tullio says, large bars are impressive if you can afford them. Yes, I agree. And a hundred ounce bar is something incredibly special. Um, whether or not you ever want to go for something like a thousand ounce Comex bar or something, that would be equally as amazing. But yeah, I agree that, uh, you know, silver bars are pretty cool if you can get hold of them at the big numbers. CR says, do I understand you that you get a tax advantage by purchasing English silver bullion rather than bullion from overseas? So I'm no tax advisor, but um, basically you're kind of right and kind of wrong. You don't get a tax advantage when buying, but you get a tax advantage when selling. So basically there's this thing called capital gains tax and capital gains tax means if you make money, if you make a profit, on something that you own that's a physical real thing like a house or a painting or silver or gold or whatever it might be if you make over a certain amount of profit you get charged tax by the wonderful government of course the tax man wants a piece of everything that we do and that includes silver so if you buy a hundred ounce silver bar and it makes you ten thousand pounds profit um, actually in that situation you'd be fine if you because the limit there is a limit on how much you can earn before you have to start paying tax but let's just say we up the scale you buy ten thousand ounces of silver and over a given period you make a hundred thousand pounds profit on that on that hundred thousand you know you've made a load of money brilliant well done the tax man gets involved and takes a certain amount of that depending on your tax bracket however if all of those thousand ounces or hundred thousand ounces or how much you've got was in these coins britannia's they are capital gains exempt so they don't even count the calculation so you get to keep everything zero tax and i think there are other coins for other countries out there that do a similar thing so if you have the same amount of money in britannia's you'd be better off at the other end than not hope that makes sense that what really wasn't financial advice guys i'm not a tax advisor as you can tell by my rather clumsy explanation of that situation um so yes roy lagden we don't pay capital gains on uk coins probably more succinct than i could have ever been uh mike b says silver four and one ounce bars any bar i or maybe are better than any bars that we were saying i don't know mike b but thank you very much Simon Tufts says he loves 500 gram bars. 500 grams is a good sign. It's a good weight as well. It's not too heavy. Can't sit there. I mean, you, you, like I've filmed with one kilo bars and they're bloody heavy. It's hard to keep them up. And in fact, talking of one kilo bars, got a cool thing to show you that a subscriber here in the UK sent me. This is a bar of aluminium. And I'd love for you all to guess in the chat how much this aluminium bar weighs. Now I'll get a one kilo bar of silver to put next to it so you can see a little bit of comparison. So let me know how much you think this bar of aluminium weighs. It's an incredible piece and I love it. So a big thank you to the subscriber that uh, sent this through to me. It's absolutely cool. Super, super interesting. But yeah, guess how much it weighs. It's a big old chunky monkey, that is for sure. It really is a chunky, chunky piece of metal. Uh, it's it's great finish as well. Like I'm, I'm, I've seen, like I'm sure a lot of you have seen, big stack McGee. Uh, Roy, 90 grams, that's very, very light. Uh, it might have to go a little higher than that. Um, but yeah, I've seen big stack McGee pour aluminium upon aluminium upon aluminium. He's done that so many times and it's really interesting. Um, so it's really cool to get hold of a big bar for once. Uh, we're getting a lot of interesting guesses coming in into the chat, and I have to say there's some people who've got it bang on, although uh, technically not bang on because this has got an exact weight, which I will tell you all in just a moment, but uh, there are some people who are very close. Um, I think we've had enough guesses in right now. We've got 193 people watching. That's mad. Casper um, Talk is pretty close. In fact, he's almost bang on, as well as I saw a few other people. We've got Dutch Silver Pirate and DFY band, one kilo, that is right. This is a kilo of aluminium. In fact, a lot of you were saying a lot less than a kilo. Um, I would, um, I don't know why that is. I would, I would have said this would have been about a kilo, but maybe it's because I've been around a lot of precious metals for a long time now, and I've seen the different densities of metals out there. Uh, but this really does highlight just how dense silver is compared with aluminium. But I guess if all of you were thinking it was even less than a kilo, some of you even saying three or 400 grams, um, you know, it, it is quite staggering to think that this here is still the, the same weight as the stuff on the right, but it's just like, it's just tiny. It's, it's so, so small. It really is. But um, I tell you what, when you're holding them both next to each other, the density of the silver makes it feel 
heavier, but they are the same weight. This is actually about a thousand and um, seventy, uh, no, thousand and seven grams. Of course, this one is a kilo, just probably about a gram over. I would imagine most kilo bars are. So, it's really weird though because the the kilo they're the same weight, but the kilo bar of silver feels heavier because of the density. I think it's just because it's all pulling it down in that smaller place. So. It's, uh, yeah, super interesting uh, to have that. We'll probably do some form of devoted video to the density of metals at another time. But yeah, really interesting stuff, really interesting indeed. Um, so we have loads of people in the chat, 190 people in this chat with 108 likes. So let's see if we can get those likes up a little bit further towards the 150 mark. If you guys are enjoying the stream, you know what to do. Hit that thumbs up button. It does help everything that we do here on YouTube and the YouTube algorithms and things like that. So um, also, if you guys want to support the channel, please feel free to do so with Super Chats. Uh, if you want to ask questions, use the at symbol at Backyard Bullion. And if you want to see anything in particular on the table here, uh, let's do a little bit of a tour de force of what we've got, because this is just a very big eclectic pile of silver. If there's anything that's striking your fancy that you want to see me have a quick close look at here on the camera, then let me know, because it's very, very unique, this table of silver. It's the culmination is about a third of all of the individual things that I've been talking about on In Focus Friday over the last four or five years. Um, it's just an eclectic pile of shiny, shiny things, uh, which is wonderful to look at, but it's certainly a little bit of a logistical nightmare for me to manage in my mind about what I want to do with it. Um, really is interesting. So, um, yeah, Pablo, you say an interesting thing that gravity is pulling it down over a smaller surface area, creating more pressure over a smaller area of skin. It could well be that principle in action for sure on this incredible aluminium bar of wonderful metal it's just really cool um archaeology mike says pcgs and ngc slabs aren't that waterproof when they are underwater and they aren't heat resistant and they can melt when it's the right temperature well you learn something new every day archaeology mike i thought that they were vacuum sealed so they would have been very much um secure from water but apparently not so uh, Jung K says, do I have any Korean coins? Um, I do. Whether or not they're in this tray of things out on the table is uh, another matter. So uh, Jung wants to see any Korean coins that we've got. Uh, I did have some, and I want to say that I saw one out here on the table, but I could not tell you if I did. So we'll have a quick look, and then we'll move on if not. Uh, maybe one of the other streams will get the other tray of things out to have a look at but um, I can't see it here I've got a few of the um, like Quatch uh, coins somewhere but they're not I think in this pile unfortunately my friends so unless somebody else can see one that I'm missing then let me know uh, Roy Langton says need some 1800 crowns they are amazing to collect they certainly are don't have any myself but I've seen a lot of them and they do look pretty cool but of course Favourite word of all is premium, and it's definitely a market that I'm not too familiar with in terms of investing. Hydra Collectible says, Backyard, what is considered a big drop when it comes to silver? My first few coins were bought for £18 spot, which in which with the UK premiums was closer to £30. It's a one to two pound difference. Is it that big? Um, well, the problem you have, uh, my friend, Hydra Collectibles, is that the vast majority of silver that you would sell to a dealer, you're only going to get spot price or slightly above. I do know a few dealers right now over spot price offers, but generally speaking, you're not going to get very much over spot price if you sell back to them. If they're like these coins and you take the time to sell them slowly on social media or on eBay or wherever it might be, then yeah, you can get pretty good prices and you'll probably be able to still get the premiums back that you pay for things. Oh, thank you very much for the super chat. That's just flashed up. Dumb Barry, thank you so much, my friend. Uh, he says, thanks for keeping it real and for, I uh, can't even speak. Thanks for keeping it real and real responsible. Great phrase, my friend. Thank you. Uh, we do try and speak sense here on the Backyard Bullion channel. Uh, and that's kind of what I want to reiterate with my point to uh, Hydro Collectibles is that Silver is a long-term investment, and yes, there is some price movement right now, and we are seeing gold and silver prices come tumbling down, 
Um, and that can be alarming for a lot of people who are new and don't sit there and, um, like me, hoard this stuff for thousands of years like a dragon. That's what I think of myself as. Um, you know, if you are worried about the things that you've got, if you can at least budget to hold them for a very long time, you'll be fine, my friend. And the one to two pound drop in silver price that we're seeing right now will be immaterial because ultimately silver is going to come back up again at some point. And if you can pick and choose when to sell, then that's what will be best for you. And what Dunbarry there says in his uh, super chat to say, thanks for keeping it real and real responsible. That's the most important thing. And it's something that I've been so, so keen on just showing all of you out there that there are agenda-driven YouTube channels out there that will be trying to sell you something all the time, that will be constantly uh, pumping silver and gold and saying it's the best thing since sliced bread. But um, yeah, it, it's a difficult one to kind of justify when you do see these prices coming down and down and down. In fact, I've just seen Casper uh, Torp say, selling, why sell silver when you can buy? Well, Casper, everybody in this world runs on money, runs on fiat currency. Uh, and even if you love silver to the max, everybody out there might end up having to sell their silver. You have to be very careful. Even the best laid plans can fall back upon themselves. And you might be in a wonderful position that you can afford to hold your silver forever, even if something untoward happened. But a lot of people aren't. And a lot of people live on pretty close breadlines that if something really did happen that they needed to cash out for, if they lost their job and they needed, they could have to sell their silver. And that's when people get in a lot of trouble. That's when people get in serious trouble with their silver as well. Um, so TN21 in the chat. Hello, my friend. Uh, TN21, you are most welcome, my friend. You've been a very big supporter of everything that we've been doing here on the channel over this last couple of years. I asked earlier in the stream who's been following my channel for a very long time, and I know you have. So welcome in. He says it's a great buying opportunity right now. Spot may fall further, but premiums will just go insane. That is one of my concerns right now that I have with silver. You see these silver price points coming down, and that's great. People get very excited. They go back up the truck, buy more, buy more of this stuff. It's something that you want uh, in your life and you want more of it. And now it's on discount. It's on cheap discount. And I see this. I, I keep an eye on the, uh, the, uh, the monkey Reddit group. I think we all know the monkey Reddit group by now. I'm not a fan of their rhetoric. I'm not a fan of their hype and hysteria and I'm also not a fan of their echo chambering where they just delete any comments or concerns out there about silver. Um, so I see all of those people now getting in a Tiswas, going silver's on discount, back up the truck, buy more. And that's very dangerous. That is a super dangerous thing to do. It's most certainly uh, fine if it's part of your bigger budgeting plan and if you were going to be buying silver anyway then it's great that your silver is as a discount compared to where it was the other day. But don't go and simply buy more, chasing the price point down. And there's this argument, this rationale that says to people that if you buy more right now, you bring your average price per ounce down. So if last month you bought when these premiums were ridiculous and you bought your American Silver Eagles for 45 bucks an ounce, and now let's say you can buy them for 40 bucks an ounce, you know, you're still buying high premium pieces of silver at a time when prices are likely to go down a little bit more uh, before they start going back up again. It, it's just really difficult to justify in my mind. And I see a lot of people being very vulnerable to this. And, you know, it's the same hype and hysteria. Um, you don't get these channels that, um, you know, are pumping silver and gold constantly. $300 an ounce silver, $500 an ounce silver, $1,000 an ounce silver. You don't get these channels then coming back when you get these movements in the market going, yeah, do you know what? All right, silver can go down as well as up. They just go, oh, it's the quiet before the storm or it's on discount. Buy as much as you can right now. You don't get those people saying those responsible things. Uh, and you do get people who are just vulnerable that get involved with it for the wrong reasons. And I've seen a lot of people who have hit hard times from these types of situations. Uh, and CR, you make a great point. It just flashed up right on my phone, right in front of me. Like chasing losses in a casino. It definitely is like that, my friend. It can be uh, very, very much like an addiction and uh, it's dangerous. And people will lose livelihoods and lose significant parts of their cash. 
Now, we are in uh, 184 in the chat, and we are 131 likes. This is already the most popular live chat, live stream that we've done over this last couple of weeks. I guess the message is going out that we are doing live streams on a Thursday afternoon. And what a Thursday to choose to do it, because silver and gold prices are coming down and have been coming down all week. But today has seen some pretty big drops in the gold and silver prices. And we are talking, I've talked a little bit there about the mantra of buying more when the prices go down. Now, I do want to follow up by saying that now is a good buying opportunity. And for me, personally, I've been steering away from buying silver because the premiums are so high. With the price of silver coming down, I would hope that there will be a reduction in premiums, which might allow some brand new silver buying to happen. I am not convinced, though, that that's going to happen anytime soon. So until I'm proven otherwise, I will be looking for more of my favourite thing in the world, which is gold. So I do foresee more gold being purchased for the Backyard Bullion pension stack in the not too distant future. I don't know what or when, but I do think gold has got a bit more room to go down in the market. So I can't see it going much below anywhere between 1230 and 1250. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy who likes to talk about shiny things. But I do think that gold has got legs to go down a little bit further from where we are right now. So I'm not going to be buying right now, but I do think that biding your time, waiting to see where things will go is a great opportunity. Um, let's also have a quick look. So we, we've talked earlier in the stream about the different percentages that have dropped down this week. So if I'm looking at this right now, we've got gold has dropped down 4.58% in the week. Silver has dropped 5.05% in the week. So silver has dropped more than gold. We all know that silver is more volatile than gold. Carlos Noda says uh, silver, same thing, he means silver, I presume. He says silver definitely has more upside than gold. It has a lot of potential silver. I'm not gonna disagree with you there, my friend, but it's also a lot more volatile. And we can see that it's over half a percent more volatile in this given week. The big loser of the week has certainly been uh, palladium which has dropped significantly, about 6%. Now, it's really interesting to compare things in dollars rather than pounds, because in dollars, the gold price has gone down 5.9%, which is nearly an additional whole percentage point more. And silver has gone down 6.3% in dollars. So for us over here in pounds, we have preserved better value for money. Now, part of that is because the value of the dollar has gone up over this last couple of days as well, with all of the potential news of inflation busting measures having to be broken out to curb inflation in the future, interest rates potentially going up in 2023 earlier than originally thought in 2024. The dollar has started to become a little bit more of a, you know, attractive option for people. And that's definitely something to factor in. Dollars are what fuel the international price of gold. But to be quite frank, I would rather have pounds right now. And we all know why. Inflation is a concern. And so that is why I think even though prices are going down, silver and gold still represent a really good inflationary hedge protection fund. Now, I don't really like all of the rhetoric about backing up the truck and going and buying as much as you can. Uh, because I do think there are plenty of other opportunities right now for more growth than silver. And all you've got to look at is the huge amount of potential and forecast growth that there is going to be having in economies as things start to open up once again in a post-COVID landscape. And that is most certainly going to fuel a lot of the market growth that we see right now. And that's why gold and silver are going back. That's because people are taking money out of gold and silver. I say people, the big hedge funds, the big people on Wall Street are taking their money out of precious metals, which sit there and do nothing and yield nothing and putting it in stuff that will yield more from growth. And it's not always about getting things like dividends. It's about having a relative amount of money put in things that will go up more than gold would have done. And if you don't have those, then you lose out more than your competitors. And that's all a massive thing. 208 people in the live chat today. Uh, huge, huge thank you to everybody for joining me. Uh, it's a really interesting day and we're going to be 
here for about another 20, to, 20 minutes to half an hour, I think, of just talking about all of the wonders that is gold and silver right now. Uh, I've been sitting here for nearly an hour, and in that hour, we haven't seen any more big drops down in gold and silver. They seem to come, I mean, it's ticked down a little bit. It was at 1280, I think, at the start of the stream. But I tell you, earlier today, I went out uh, for a swim, and gold was sitting around the, uh, in, well, I'm looking at in dollars, I was really confused there for a moment. I was, went out for a swim earlier today, and it was about 1295 for gold. I came out of the swim and checked my phone and I had a message from a very good friend of mine saying gold's at 12.75. And I was absolutely uh, like amazed that that much has fallen in that short space of time. So when these price drops happen, they happen fast. It's really quite scary quite how the markets can change on the turn of a dime to corner a phrase. So if in this last half an hour you guys have anything you want to ask me about uh, silver, gold, my opinions on spot prices, buying anything that you want to know and let me know down in the chat if you use the at symbol it highlights my name which really helps me spot your comment uh, or you can super chat that will certainly get my attention otherwise if there's any of these coins here on the table that you want to see or have a close look at if something's caught your eye in the corner of frame or there's something that we haven't looked at yet then let me know and we'll pick it up and we'll have a good close look at it Stephen the Shepherd says, Backyard Bullion, a lot of the small and medium-sized companies will go bankrupt as soon as the stimulus stops, so the economy is not in a great shape. Yeah, I agree, Stephen. There is a lot of hardship. And I'm, you know, I'm saying here about growth looking good for the future, and there will be um there will be hardship for a lot of businesses in certain sectors. hundred percent. Oh, I'll tell you what, I've just spotted something. I've spotted the Korean coin for Jung. Anyway, I'll continue with my point and then we'll go back to that. Um if, yes, you're in an awkward sector that is relying a lot on the stimulus, there will be a lot of businesses that will go out, and that's super sad. But unfortunately, like with a lot of these businesses in certain sectors, there's a huge turnaround and the opportunity. There is a reason why those businesses existed in the first place. And whether or not it's because uh, they will be bought out by other people and new businesses will take up their place, the overall economic growth will still happen. Now, it's really hard, and that's part of the kind of capitalist market economy. You know, when businesses go bust, um, then you really then you really don't understand, you know, the wider economies, macro picture of an economy. It's about the bigger picture, not about certain little individual businesses. Uh, Jung, I do have a Korean coin. I picked it up. Look, I saw it down there when I was talking to that other gentleman. And uh, I know you were asking about a Korean coin, but I have the Zisin Gallus here. So there we go. I know you were asking about it earlier. I hope you like it. It's one of the coolest coins out there. I think it's wonderful. You've got a brilliant little uh, sort of, uh, what are they called? I was going to say hieroglyphic. Hologram, that's the word. I knew it began with an H. So it says AG and 999. I'm not sure the camera is really catching it. There you go. It says AG on that side and then 999 on that side. Really cool piece. Fossil metals in the chat. Long time no speak. How are you doing, my friend? I uh, hope you're well. Uh, George says in the chat, uh, would platinum ever outshine gold being more rare? Well, George, this is a really interesting question because ultimately platinum used to be worth more than silver. Uh, sorry, silver, more than gold. It was always like silver, gold, then platinum. There's a reason why a gold album is less important than a platinum album for the big music industry people. And there's like in my old Dungeons and Dragons world, um, you know, there were platinum piece is worth more than gold. So it's really like difficult in my mind to see why platinum is worth less than gold, but it is. Whether it will ever return, I don't know, is the honest answer, George. Um, we have got Silver Clan saying smash the like button. Thank you very much, my friend. I appreciate it. Uh, John liked his Korean coin. Thank you. If anyone else wants to see anything in particular, then let me know down in the live chat. Granddad Lion says, don't panic. You don't lose anything if you don't sell. So just hodl. 100% agree, my friend. And that's another thing that so many people who might be new, who are worried about the drops in silver and gold prices, you haven't actually lost anything until you sell. Now, that's a difficult rationale for a lot of people to get. And it's also a bit of a dangerous one as well, because it's almost like that gambler's, um, you know, that gambling addiction, uh, self-reassurance thing. You know, you, there's always another bet that you can make. It's just money that you haven't made yet. Uh, difficult one, but I agree in general that if you don't sell, if you don't need to sell when prices go up and down, then it's not a problem. 
not a problem at all. It's a good thing for prices to go down, in my opinion, uh, in a cyclical way. Um, fossil metals is all good and well. Thank you. I hope you are well, my friend, because it's, you know, it's been a while since we've chatted and I know things were difficult at one point, so uh, it's good to see you still around. Roy Langton says uh, that he's got something on order. I don't know what it was. Maybe he's talking with somebody. Uh, oh, and maybe I've missed a comment. I think Ashley Cooks. He's referring to Ashley Cook, who's highlighted my name in a comment, which really helps. And he's, uh, well, she says, sorry, although it could be he, Ashley's a, a man's name as well. Uh, it says, do you know, and, and let's be quite frank, 93% of my viewers are male. So it would be quite amazing if you are a lady, Ashley. I'm sorry if you are. Um, Ashley Cook says, do you know yet if the Royal Mint are going to be doing a bullion two ounce completer coin for the Royal Mint Queen's Beast series? Uh, yes. Roy, you've got one on order. Do you mean the proof special doodah or the bullion versions? I haven't seen any notifications about them, but maybe I've just missed it. That'd be really interesting. What I understand actually is yes, they will be making bullion versions of the 10 ounce and two ounce silvers for the Queen's Beast completer, which is gonna be a must have. Goodness me, those will look incredible. Uh, Christopher Holmes says that he's just got into silver stacking recently and he's not sure what a typical dip in price looks like. Should I wait for a better time to buy more silver? Really interesting question that you raised there, Christopher. Um, I personally think there is a little bit more room for silver to go down. Uh, in fact, we've just refreshed the gold and silver price right now and it has gone down a little bit further. Uh, we're at just over $26 an ounce in the US dollar terms. I do think that that's got a bit more space to go down to around the $24 to $25 range. Whether that will happen this week or whether it will happen slowly over the coming weeks is anybody's guess. And it's always a difficult one when trying to time the purchases of your gold and silver. Uh, for me, it's always about if you are going to, if you're just going to buy, just buy, make that decision, hold it for a long time, you'll be just fine. Um, it, that's my thoughts. So, uh, Kupu, which is a really interesting name, says, Backyard Bullion, will they be able to manipulate this market forever? At what point does the manipulation end? And what do you think will finally trigger the end of the manipulation? Um, so, Kupu, I am not a fan of the theory, that is, I think, in my mind, the right word for it, that there is a grand manipulating cabal of people about silver. Now, silver is as with every commodity out there, manipulated by people, by traders, by unscrupulous individuals. But is it just held down by Wall Street because they want us not to have the true value of money? No, I don't think so. Um, will it be revalued in time because of its industrial demand? Yes, that's the most likely thing that I think will fuel silver's growth over time. I don't personally think there will be a point when any given cabal of bankers will end manipulation uh, is the honest answer. And I don't mean that in any disrespectful way. It's just not how I think about the markets and how I mean about silver. So Fossil Metals says it feels like yesterday that an ounce could be had for 12 to 14 pounds. People said it's going nowhere. How wrong they were. I know, mate, a lot of what you see on the table here was bought for around the 14 to 16 pound an ounce mark. Things like the older koalas, this one's a little bit more recent, but the older koalas and things that I've had in the collection, I think, in fact, 2017 here, uh, you know, a lot of these were bought for that price range, and it is quite amazing to see how things have gone over this last couple of months, and, well, to be honest, all year. So, yeah, diff different world than we were a few years ago, um, for sure. Silver Clan says that he bought a 1986... <coughs> excuse me, I'm losing my voice... 1986 United Kingdom proof coin collection from the Royal Mint in a red leather case for six dollars. Beautiful coins. Is it a good buy? Um, does it have any precious metal in it? Because if it does for six dollars, you've probably got yourself a really good deal. If it's just the regular cupra nickel coins, even so for six dollars, it's a piece of history and it certainly would be a nice set to have. So uh, yeah, I'd say it's a pretty good deal. Pretty good price. Pretty good product. Mark her says is there a is there silver money like com is there a silver money like company equal to gold money debit cards backed by gold i don't know is the honest answer uh back uh, so kupu says back your bullion by manipulation he means price oppression the true value of silver should be much higher than its current price yes and no is the honest answer to that kupu so a lot of the arguments that are around that topic to help its case is if people cherry pick certain price points in history and compare it but if you go back far enough in history 
actually the price of silver is roughly where it needs to be. Now I do think in the modern world silver has been undervalued in its relative useful industry, like I said earlier in my reply to you. But ultimately I think silver is at a relatively you know, appropriate price per ounce compared with where it was in the past. Of course it fluctuates up and down, left and right, but I don't think it's massively undervalued. Where it will be undervalued is that growth in industry. So we'll have to see how that pans out over time. Uh, that's just my opinion, Kupu. I'm, I'm not here to tell you what's exactly right. That's just what I think and what I've always thought. Uh, the one you know seven says, didn't the US make gold illegal to have and then after they turned in the gold, they didn't, didn't the price magically go up? Uh, I haven't really researched the kind of price points of that era, but I know what you're referring to when they outlawed the ownership of gold. It's happened in various different countries, including the United Kingdom as well. Um, it's part of the the nature of the history that we've gone through with gold. I don't feel that that's something that's likely to happen in a modern world economy again, because part of the reason for doing something like that is to return to uh, gold standards. But that's something that's gone now in the past. That won't return. A lot of people think and say it will return. Um, but the gold standard is a very antiquated, outdated mode of economy, you know, managing an economy, and it's not something that is practical. Um, it, it's just not going to happen, I think. So I guess it's a little bit of a moot point. Um, but ultimately, we do see certain countries around the world that still, you know, hold gold as something that's really interesting. And one of them is Turkey, which put out a mantra to all dealers and uh, jewellery makers to say, don't sell gold because we want it. Um, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. It's all relative to the currencies that you own it in, in, in my opinion. Um, we've got Archaeology Mike. Another question says, um, Backyard Bullion, you really don't want silver to be high in the future for those who don't pay well, and when it's low, they can buy silver. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I think that it is important to keep silver relatively low so that we can all still continue to uh, accumulate it. Silver is not a get-rich-quick scheme, it's a stay-rich-quick scheme. And that's something that a lot of people have forgotten about in the past, I think. 235 people watching. This is this is simply the biggest live stream that we've ever done. And I really want to say a massive thank you to everybody who has joined in the stream to listen to me ramble on. Uh, for those that have not seen one of our live streams before, we don't do anything fancy. We don't have all of these funky little graphics. I am just sat here at my kitchen table, got my phone balanced on top of one of my old furnaces, and we're just shooting the breeze about silver and gold and the massive price points that we're seeing at the moment. So thank you for joining me on this Thursday afternoon. It's very wet and rainy outside, and it's certainly not a day that I want to go and walk the dogs. Unfortunately, they're fast asleep on the sofa, paying no mind to the world going by. Um, so yes, we are doing live streams more regularly now, so my little sort of plug to you all is to say uh, that if you haven't hit the subscribe button, or if you want to join one of these live streams again in the future, Thursday afternoons is the time to do that. Um, Cash and Coins says thanks for this, uh, congrats for the success. I mean, I, I think it's just because there are probably a lot more people out there looking at the fact that Gold and Silver is uh, having an interesting time of it in this last 24 hour period. So for sure, that's probably more to do with it than anything else. But um, it is nice to see more people in. Thank you very Kupu for the big shout out. Smash the like button, everyone. Um, you know, I hope that I haven't, like, I don't think I've been rude to you, Kupu, in my response to the manipulation questions. It's all about relative opinions and I could be completely wrong. And if I am, that's fine too. Um, but it's all relative and it's why it's how we have healthy and fun debates. That, may, that means the world to me. And that's one of the reasons why I do and I continue to make videos here on YouTube. So, uh, by the way, for anybody watching, if you want to see something in particular on the table, we've got a huge array of items. I'll just do a little tour de force once again. If there's anything that you want me to pick up and see uh, close to the camera, then please let me know by chatting down below. If you highlight my name, at Backyard Bullion, or if you put in a super chat, I'll see it a lot more easily and we can put something up close to the camera and you guys can have a quick close look at it. If you want to hit the like button as well, see if we can get over 200 likes, that would be pretty cool. Likes are a big thing uh, on YouTube and they really do help 
uh, all the wonderful YouTube algorithms circulate videos out there across the uh, the wonderful YouTube land. So if there's anything you want to see, then let me know. Otherwise, let's see if we can get to 200 likes before the end of this stream. We're at 176 right now. Um, and for those who have been watching my live streams for a while, if we don't get that close to it, we're going to start having to do the storage wars. Humana, humana, humana. So back to the chat for those that highlight my name with an at symbol. Uh, we have got Dave Saunders saying, do you feel governments may use silver and gold to give intrinsic value to digital coins when issued? Uh, to be quite frank, Dave, no, I don't. I think if they have uh, something like that, a digital currency that they bring up, it's going to be essentially a digital version of the dollar, be like a cryptocurrency backed by a government. That's all it will be. It won't be backed by gold, um, not at all. It will stifle the market and it, will be, it won't be as uh, easy for them to do what they want to do with it. So that's my thoughts. Uh, the one you know, Seven, says, back your bullion. Is it good to have other... Yeah, it's good to have other people's opinions so you don't get lost in one's own thoughts. Yes, my friend, and that's what I do here on the channel. Uh, Dave... Uh, no, what was it, Dave? It was Dunbarry. I don't know if he's still in the chat, but Dunbarry earlier with the super chat saying uh, that... I can't remember what phrase he used. It says, thanks for keeping it real and real responsible. So we try to sell just the responsible, normal world things uh you know there are just people out there who will pump and will just constantly you know tell people that silver and gold are going to go to the moon you should buy as much as possible i think buying in moderation is the most important thing and you know having different opinions is really important so thank you for that feedback my friend mark wise says what's the <coughs> bee honeycomb coin um bee honeycomb Ah, there it is, underneath the bar here. This was actually a gift from a Silver Forum member who sent it in for me to uh, talk about here on In Focus Friday, which is coming out tomorrow. And this is from Le Grand Mint. Uh, it's, I forget the, all the particulars about what it was about, but basically it's uh, about the campaign for bees, honeybees, and how important, of course, they all are to our, um, you know, what's the word? fragile environment i suppose and how the theory that the honeybee is one of the most important things to keep the world going it's a wonderful piece wonderful coin really nice interesting collector's piece for sure uh definitely something i would recommend if you like this kind of theme of coin uh really interesting piece as well with the uh, the detail on there um going back through i'm sorry i'm just gonna have to highlight uh, or find people who've highlighted questions because it's very difficult to to see all of these chats coming in Zach Ball says, Backyard Bullion, do you have anything from the Perth Mint in Australia? We've got a bunch of Perth Mint stuff here. We've got some koalas. Um, we've got some of the Luna coins. We've got a big chunky Luna pig over here. This is one of the five ounce Luna pigs. So I hope that's enough of a Perth Mint showcasing for you. In fact, these coins are incredible out of the capsule. So let me just crack the top of this capsule open and then I can show it in all of its glory. Simply is stunning. Uh, whilst I get this out and have a look at it, uh, we've got a few other bits in the chat. Wayne Burrock has asked about any 1982 Mexican coins. That's very specific. Uh, I don't think I've got any of them there. JA is asking... Oh, I can't get this capsule off now. JA is asking about what is the triangular piece. So the triangular pieces are shipwreck coins for sure. Um, they are very cool. We'll show those in a moment. Bloody hell. I'll tell you what, this capsule, it's properly on. Let me tell you. There we go. Off it comes now. And we can get this piggy, piggy, piggy coin out. What a beautiful piece. The Perth Mints really do hit the nail on the head when it comes to quality. And the finish on these matte finishes are incredible. Really nice to observe out of the capsule as well. A lot of people are so afraid of taking coins out of capsules and looking at them and seeing them. But to be quite frank, you know, bullion is bullion. And it's just wonderful to get them out and actually look at them. And there's good old Queenie on the other side with Ian Rank Broadley's portrait beautiful perfect pristine condition look at that wonderful right that's going back in the capsule before i do something stupid like sneeze on it or something that would be bad i've done something stupid already in this stream for those who have been watching since the calamitous waterfall that was the pint of water being spilled over everything um yeah that was a fun fun start to the stream the triangular coins are shipwreck coins from um the Royal Australian Mint, is this the same one? Yeah, that's the Batavia. So we've got two different ones here. Uh, really, really nice pieces from the Royal Australian Mint. Now we've just gone from the Perth Mint to the Royal Australian Mint, different mints. And the Perth Mint has always taken like pride of place for um, 
you know the the incredible work they do the high high sort of proof coins and the high bullion coins the premiums that grow on them absolutely incredible pieces but the royal australian mint certainly did do a good job for these particular coins uh and they are coins by the way even though they're triangular really like them uh and would highly recommend them if you want to get hold of them very very cool indeed um so we're going to go back to uh the chat so uh carlos noda says can you show us some of your coolest silver bars coolest silver bars i don't have any of my own coolest silver bars oh. no i do i lie of course i have i've got two very cool kilo silver bars anybody like ripples smash one in the in the chat if you like a silver bar with ripples on them and these certainly are ripple goodies for sure so i hope that answers your question uh carlos can i show you some of my coolest silver bars smash one if you like ripples um kupu says all as well my friend i enjoy hearing different opinions i've been wanting to make videos myself for a while and it's uh pronounced kupu lol i'm sorry i've been calling you kupu um, I might just keep calling you Kupu because it's quite funny. Anyway, but thank you very much, Kupu. Uh, awesome video. You should make some videos, man. I think it's a wonderful thing to do. I think it's an incredible hobby. It's great to have all of the sort of different opinions out there and it is important to share and showcase what you want to talk about. So go ahead and do them. Dave Saunders says, when selling silver, there is a premium. I'm going to, have to put these down. These are a kilo each. Bloody heavy. Dave Saunders says, when selling silver, is there a premium over spot for coins? Or are bars selling for the same value? Well, the answer, Dave, I would say is that for the majority of the coin type things you see on the table here, if you want to sell them to random people on the second hand market, then yeah, it's going to be easy to get decent premiums back on most of these coins. If you're selling through Facebook, eBay, Instagram, wherever it might be, the Silver Forum, it's probably going to get you decent returns on those premiums. However, if you just sell to a bullion dealer, you're probably going to get, for want of a better phrase, shafted. Um, you're not going to get very much over the spot price for sure. Uh, talking of spot price, let's check in with spot price, see where we are. <clears throat> we are at £1,274.83 pennies in Great British Pounds, 1777 in US dollars. Um, I think still it's dropping in US dollars, but it's holding a little bit in pounds, and that's because of the value of the dollar. Uh, getting stronger, which means that the, the pound has less buying power relative to the dollar. Very difficult concept to get hold of. Basically, the more the value of the dollar goes up, the higher the gold price goes up. So whilst gold price is coming down in dollars, the strength of the dollar is going up, which means that the price of gold in pounds doesn't fall as much. So very difficult, but basically it's still going down a little bit. Uh, silver is hovering around the $26 an ounce mark. So Big loss on platinum though as well today, under under 80 at the moment. Big, big losses in metals today. Um, so yes. Um, Roxilla says, BYB, you still rambling? Great stream, my friend. Thank you, my friend. Uh, yes, we are still rambling. We've been going, what now? An hour and 22 minutes. Uh, we'll probably be wrapping up within the next 15 or so minutes, I think, and then we'll uh, call it a day. Already starting to lose my voice. Uh, down here on this mammoth live stream, but it's been one of our best live streams that we've had for the last, I think this is like week eight now of doing them. Um, let me in fact check. I can see when I last did, uh, when I started doing my live streams on a regular basis, it was one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So this is the seventh live stream, lucky number seven. We got over, we got one point where 240 people in the chat and we've had over 200 thumbs ups which is pretty incredible. So no massive need for the Storage Wars uh, auctioneer impression to finish up the stream today, uh, unless you guys really want to hear me make a fool of myself, in which case I'll be more than happy to oblige, as always. Jonathan Gray asks, Backyard Bullion, what do you think of buying physical gold to hedge your portfolio versus gold ETFs? I think buying physical gold is much better than buying ETF gold. In fact, I had a very good conversation with a very close friend of mine from school about this exact topic. And he had bought a little bit of physical gold, but wanted to get more gold, had concerns about security and storage. So he decided to buy ETF gold. And he bought quite a lot of ETF gold, probably more than he should have done, and he ended up selling a bunch of it. Uh, I think he also realized that things like the, the, the digital gold storage fees and transaction fees 
slowly over time actually add up quite a lot. And if you are holding gold for a long time, there's something to be concerned about for sure. So for me, physical gold all the way, but some people like the security of having an ETF. Kevin Morningstar says, Backyard, what is the best portable way for the gold-silver ratio to close, or probable way, sorry, for the gold-silver ratio to close in its true mining ratio? Kevin, I don't think we're ever going to see the true mining ratio achieved again, uh, unfortunately. There's so many different theories about this and why. don't really want to go into it much, but ultimately, silver and gold, yes, the mining ratio is like 8 to 1, but it's not something that is reflected in the price. It's a difficult concept to understand, but basically it comes down ultimately to silver just being this tradable, volatile entity and commodity that's on the paper markets. And it's often, silver is often a more of a byproduct than anything else of other mines. Uh, there's of course a significant amount more of silver out there in terms of ounces than gold. There's a whole bunch of different factors at play, but I don't think we're ever gonna see those low rates again, those low ratios again. I don't think I really did that answer justice. It's something I've talked about in the past. Um, mining costs, are, yeah, and Fossil makes a good point as well that mining costs are not fixed either. Um, things could go up or down in that mining ratio in terms of value and price. That's another factor. I've done videos on this in the past and to be quite frank, um, Kevin, I'm an hour and 25 minutes into a live stream um, that are you know, that my, my voice is going, my brain is going, my brain is almost completely gone, in fact. I, I'm struggling to uh, keep up with the chat from all of you guys out there. Um, but yeah, it, it's, a, it's a certainly an interesting topic. And Joseph Jones makes a good point as well. The mining ratio is 8 to 1, but stockpile ratios are probably close to 27 to 1. Um, yeah, that's another great thing to, to sort of point out as well. Um, Dutch Silver Pirate says, do you also think that you're... You, uh, do you see, my brain is completely going. I can't even read... Start again. Dutch Silver Pirate asks, Backyard Bullion, do you also think to store your coins in capsule then in tubes? Um, so what you see out on the, here on the table at Dutch Silver Pirate is a whole bunch of stuff in capsules. And this is because the vast majority of these pieces, when bought from the dealers, they come supplied in capsules because they are slightly more premium items that are not bullion coins. Some of them are in little plastic baggies um, that they didn't come in capsules. Uh, things like the Britannias I'll have put in capsules myself to try and keep them in better condition. Um, but yes, generally, if they come supplied in a capsule, they stay in a capsule for me. Uh, often they don't even get opened from the capsule. I don't want to potentially risk and damage them. If it's a bullion coin, I keep them in the tubes. I don't capsulate them uh, and then keep them in other tubes. Some people go an extra step further and vacuum seal and vacuum pack everything as well. But um, it's, yeah, it's not necessarily that... Uh, practical, certainly if you've got a long, large amount of bulk. Uh, MJ asks, do you invest in crypto as well? Only reason I ask is when lockdown happened, it was impossible to sell my physical gold and silver if I needed to as the shops were shut for months. Yes, my friend, uh, I say yes, not to the crypto bit. I don't have any crypto. Uh, I did accept payments in crypto for a short period of time, um, but I just instantly cashed out of all of these things. And to be honest, you know, but part of the thing about cryptos that people want to pay in cryptos was um, they want the flexibility of being able to buy and sell cryptos for their goods. And for me, it's like, well, if you're buying, you know, the goods from me, you're going to, have to be paying all the transaction transfer fees and things like that. It's going to cost you more than if you cashed out and just did it. And then loads of people said, no, it's the principle of being able to buy something with Bitcoin. I was like, right, okay, fine. Yeah, I get that. But still, it's more expensive. So for me, it's just not a practical thing. There's nothing I need to or want to buy with cryptos. But yes, certainly when everything shut down last year, it was a difficult time to think about not being able to get your cash out on some of the metals that you might have had. You will have found uh, on the second hand market for private sales that things were still fine. But yeah, a lot of dealers, a lot of businesses closed down and it was almost impossible to go for a quick sell of a vast bulk amount of silver or gold. Paula Lawrence says, what's the one with a fan of leaves under the kilo bar over to the left? Fan of leaves on the kilo bar over to the left. It was up here. Fan of leaves. I can't see it, Paula. Paula, please let me know. Or is it this one you're talking about? So that's to the right. Under the one kilo bar over to the left. Maybe it is this one. 
Paula, if you go back in the chat and let me know again which one it is, I'll, uh, I'll certainly have a look at it. Um, Christopher Holmes says, um, back your bullying on everyone in the chat. Thank you for all the different views and knowledge. Hope you all have a great day today. Thank you, my friend, for stopping by and asking questions. I really do appreciate it. It's very nice of you to have joined. Um, if you guys have been watching for, gosh, now nearly an hour and a half of our time here, just enjoying talking about silver and gold, make sure you hit that thumbs up button. We're at 209 thumbs ups. That's incredible. Uh, we had 240 people at one point in the chat, which is our biggest live stream chat we've ever done. Um, oh, somebody's just said silver's dipped below 26. Oh my goodness, it has dropped. We've seen another, right, so this is one of these things where it just happens out of the blue. Um, we've seen another big drop in silver and gold. So silver has gone down, I mean, say a big drop, it's gone down 12 cents on the dollar. So you know, relatively speaking, it's quite a decent chunk of change, which has just dropped off. And gold has gone down nearly three pounds an ounce since just a few minutes ago. So you can see how difficult things are. Um, Paula says, to the right of the dragon, one ounce bar. To the right of the dragon, one ounce. I'm really sorry about this. Do you mean this one or this one? To the right of the dragon one ounce bar. Have we got other dragon one ounce bars or am I just being completely dumb? You're asking for something with a fan of leaves. Is it the Lion King? Or is it, I don't know. Paula, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, Paula. It's really difficult for me to see. Um, uh, Diffie Band says where I live, I get tax on bullion purchases under a thousand dollars. So slow and steady is not viable. That sucks, my friend. Is that the same on gold as well? Under the Germania allegories now. I'm moving everything everywhere. Aha! What, you mean, so this one, the ring, the, the leaf ring, this is on the reverse of the Germania mint coins. So this is a wonderful design from the Germania mint. Yes, Paula, we've done it. I'm so sorry, Paula. We took our time to get there, but we've done it. Uh, we've managed to find these things. This one is on the uh, da -da -da -da, Germania... I want to say that's just their Germania standard coin, um, but it is their other side, which often I like better. And it's one of their, it's like one of my bits of criticism to them because it's the only piece of criticism I can find on the Germania Mint products uh, that their you know, bog standard reverse, which is this double eagle and these double uh, reefs of leaves actually ends up looking better most of the time than the design on the other side. So um, yeah, interesting concept really to sort of, you know, uh, yeah, I love, I love the Germania Mint stuff. I really do, and I'm a big fan of them. In fact, we'll get the Fafnir Dragon out once again because this is by far and away one of the coolest pieces of silver that I've ever seen. Really interesting concept as well to get the double figure of eight capsule and have the dragon on both sides. So really, really cool pieces. But Paula, we did it in the end. I'm sorry that it took so long to find that coin in all the mess. Uh, Woody Silver Adventures saying hello. How are you doing, Woody? I hope you're well, my friend. Um, so we are going to be now in the last 10 minutes or so of the stream. I'm going to start thinking about wrapping things up because it's been an absolute pleasure talking to all of you, but I genuinely am losing my voice and all I've had to drink in this hour and a half from a pint of water was about a thumb's worth because I spilled it all over my bloody coins at the start of the bloody video. So I've been sat here not able to quench my thirst more than a couple of sips of water. I feel like I've been meandering through the desert of YouTube for this last hour and a half without anything to quench my thirst. And let me tell you, I'm going to be going and cracking open a nice cold beer after this because it's been a really fun stream to, uh, to chat with all of you guys and gals out there. Um, it's really nice to do these and we've been doing more of them of late. And this is the seventh, I think, in a row that we've done on a weekly basis. Uh, so it's certainly something that we will be doing more of. Uh, and if you want to see our um, live streams again, then Thursday afternoons is the time to do it. We've hit a really nice little like milestone of 222 likes. I said at the start of the stream it would be incredible to get to 100, but this stream has been pretty incredible. Um, so thank you to everybody for watching. I really do appreciate it. Crystal Miku says, a few years ago, you made a video about using a rubber to remove milk spots. Have you found a meta method or would you say it's still the best way to go about it? Um, so Crystal, it's actually a really bad method to use if I'm being brutally honest. Uh, and I made that coin actually was more than a few years ago. That was one of my very first videos um, that I did way back in like 2016. 
and I cringe looking back and watching it. Um, I still think it's a good method to get rid of things like fingerprints and uh, really heavy milk spots on a coin that really the coin is, you know, it's more that you're tidying it up because you enjoy it and want to look at it. Uh, but if you're doing that specifically to try and sell it as a pristine version of a coin, that is possibly one of the worst things that you can do for it. Um, so we'll see. Um, I think there are plenty of other methods that you could use to uh, actually clean your coins. There are silver dips that you can do. There are things like that. So that's probably my best idea. Um, there's a lot of people in the chat talking about spoofing fines and manipulation and things like that. I haven't really been keeping up with it. It's very difficult to do uh, with all of the chat comments coming in. Uh, and a big thank you needs to be said to our moderators today as well. Uh, we've had Fossil Metals, we've had uh, Joseph Jones, we've had Roy Lagden, I think there's been a few others. I do apologize if I'm forgetting, I'm just gonna scroll back up and see uh, who else has been in. Um, but thank you to all of those uh, moderators for helping keeping the chat safe and clean. Um, the, uh, the Darren Wagner says, is there a good method of removing tiny scratches on silver from someone using a bad rag to do so earlier? Unfortunately, Darren, no. Those pretty much will always be there. Um, you know, the, the whole point of a coin being struck is that it's being struck once by a, uh, you know, by a die, and then it's never touched again. That's the whole point. And once that polished high, you know, high relief die has been used, that's the time for the silver to stay the same as it will then any marks will be permanent, unfortunately. Uh, if you get a bar, you can, to a certain degree, get rid of some of the issues that are on there, uh, but it will always still have the micro, micro scratches. Big thank you to Victor Fess for the, um, for the super chat. Thank you, my friend. He says, why do you think people are so abrasive when having conversations about bullion and currency deflation after hyperinflation? It's a very good question. It's because it's all to do with money, Victor. It's all to do with money, and money runs high with emotions and opinions, and that's part of the problem. And to a certain extent, I am, you know, I'm victim to this myself. I, I get the emotions running sometimes. I do it a lot less now, but, you know, there was a period in my life where when people would talk on the, my comment sections and, you know, be for want of better phrases, assholes, uh, I would sometimes fight back. And, you know, it's just not worth it now. And a lot of the time, for people who truly are just there to cause trouble and just be abrasive, like the phrase you use, uh, I just will honestly just block them to hell with them. You know, it's it's just not something that's worth worrying yourself about. Um, you know, Twitter trolls, um, Reddit trolls, Instagram trolls, all the trolls out there, it's just what's the point like it's get a get a new fad for god's sake it's 2021 internet trolling is just such an old thing it really is people saying we're back over 26 now maybe there's a little price correction i'm just refreshing my page we're still under 25 at uh, 25 95 dollars an ounce so still holding under that 26 dollar range that's a key indicator of where things are going to go i think if it doesn't finish the day around that mark if it goes lower then i think we're going to be in for another bit of a rocky road on the friday and summer, by the way, has always been a bad time for gold and silver. Summer always sees sol uh, silver and gold prices going down. So it's no surprise to me that gold and silver has gone down. And when you see a lot of these channels out there pumping constantly over and over again, you kind of think, you know, you're trying to look at history to influence your you know, decisions for the future. Actually look at the history, for God's sake, and don't just rely on conspiracy theories. Darren Wagner says, do you recommend maybe having one bar in one stack for fondling and getting all scratched up while others remain sealed or pristine? Yes, my friend, I completely agree. That's one of the reasons why I am and always have been a huge fan of hand-poured silver. Uh, poured silver is the perfect example of silver that you can pick up, hold, touch, have on your desk as a play piece. I have it all the time. Uh, there's always a piece of poured silver on my desk, and at the moment it's uh, these two big bad boys, my two kilo beauties. I also am a big fan of having a gold piece out on my desk at all times as well to fondle, uh, and this is one of my favourites. I like I have to take my wedding ring off uh, to do this, but this is my favourite pastime just to sit here and pretend I'm a pirate by playing the pirate coin rolling game. A bit difficult at the angle I'm at right now, uh, but I can. I've got so much better at doing this in my left hand. Ah! say that and he throws it. it's because the angle I'm at let me see if I can get in the right angle and then I can 
maybe show you my skills, but the coin rolling skills have certainly got better over the last couple of weeks. Um, it's funny, I, I saw this actually on uh, scrubs of all things, I think it was, or one of the medical TV shows. Surgeons use this to help their dexterity in their fingers. Uh, not that I'm a surgeon or anything, but um, I like doing this. It's really good fun, and I would highly recommend anybody trying to do it. And with a gold coin, it's even more difficult because of the density of the coin. It flips and it moves so quickly. But uh, yeah, starting to get quite good at that. Uh, yeah, anyway. Sorry, a little bit of a distraction there. So we're going to start wrapping things up now because I have been going for an hour and 40 minutes and my voice really is about to go. My brain is also following on. So a big thank you to everybody for watching. If anybody has any final comments or questions that they want to uh, ask, uh, then I'm going, to, I'm going to allow that comment. Uh, Foster uh, says that the, the molester bar is definitely want a bar on your table that you can most certainly touch and enjoy. I think that is a, a very good idea to have. Uh, YouTube obviously flagged up that word. But um, yes, a big thank you to everybody for stopping by and hanging out today, this afternoon. Uh, stay safe out there, I think is the important thing. You know, we've got some big movements in the markets right now. There's going to be an, a massive influx. Oh, gold's gone down even further. 1271, 1770 in US dollars. So gold has dropped even further relative to silver in this last couple of minutes. You know, it can happen so quickly. Um, it really is a mad time right now. But yes. Big thank you to everybody for watching. If you hit that thumbs up button on the way out, let's see, in fact, let's see, do you know what? We're at a close milestone and I've got just about enough breath in my lungs left to do the impression of the Storage Wars man to get to 250 likes. So we're at 238. Can I get a 239? A hum and a hum and a hum and a, we get a 239, 239. And once we've got 239, we're gonna head on up to the 240s, 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 can we get to 239? We're not even getting to 239 at the moment. 240, we're at 240. Can we get a 242, 242, 241 even? Any 241s, any two? Hamana, hamana, hamana. Anyway, this is all going to be a long worried up, isn't it? I think all 176 of you that are still in the chat are still have hit the like button already. No, 243. We're still going. Come on, 244. Any more, any more for any more before we start to absolutely lose our brain. 246, 246. Any advance on 246 to get 250s? We've got 247. We've also got four thumbs downs from the wonderful Thumbs Down Brigade out there. Maybe if we just count them as well, we're at 251. Because the one thing that these people don't understand is that a thumbs down is an interaction on a video, which helps. So I welcome the thumbs downs. I love them, they're wonderful, and a big thank you to everybody who puts a thumbs down on my video. That's not to say that I want them, I want thumbs ups. I've got two more to go, come on. Two more, how many, how many, how many? Can I get 249, 249, 249, and then we go to 250, and then I will go and, I oh, Yudi's in the chat. Yudi, my friend, we haven't done any guessing games today, so you weren't on fire. We're at 249. One more, and then I can end 252. There we go, we're well over. We're bidding higher than we're worth. Big thank you to you all for joining. Have a very safe and happy weekend ahead. We will see you on the next video, but thank you all and have a fantastic time. Take care, see you next time.